That was my chair, I promise. Welcome, welcome to the stream. It's not going to be a super long one today, but I have been threatening to stream for a while now and I wanted to make good on that threat, so here we are. I figured just a small tail building stream would be kind of a nice way to get back in the, back in the flow. So right now I am working on a zebra tail for a boiler. He commissions tail to go along with the rest of his fursuit. Um, he's getting a different character built, um, but I told him I could work on this at the same time. Since it's going to the same place and hopefully it won't take too long. But I traced all my fur out ahead of time since uh, watching me trace things on the floor isn't exactly the most engaging thing ever. Um, and then it would be, it was easier to just set my camera up for working on my desk for the rest of it. So hopefully, hopefully you guys enjoy the stream. I do have my audio turned on today. Um, in the future, when I do longer streams, I might not. Um, because a lot of times I like to work with music, and YouTube has a lot of copyright restrictions for the music that I like to listen to while I'm working. So, But yeah, for today, for today you get to listen to me talk. You get to hear the nuisance that is my sewing machine running in the background. Later. Haven't streamed in so long that it's kind of weird now. It took me forever to locate my webcam. But I have it back. I didn't even have to have another one. I'm so stoked. I don't remember how much money I spent on my webcam. I just remember it being like an investment. So I didn't want to have to get another one. You guys have a nice little bird's eye view. I have a little octopus tripod that I have um, currently hanging off of my floor lamp, which is nice because sometimes I don't feel like being on camera and today is one of those days. So you get to look at my hands and arms. I guess I could probably tilt it down so you can see what I'm doing just a little bit better for now since I'm not actually sewing yet.
Just about got all the pieces cut out already. Because even though it has a bunch of little pieces, it's not that big of a tail, so. Make sure that And hopefully I will be able to do more streams here soon. I am currently waiting for some of my supplies to come back in stock for a head that I'll be building. A couple of heads, obviously, but um, kind of killing some time while I wait for some of the stuff that I need. It's like the whole coronavirus has made it awfully difficult to get a hold of some of the things that I need. I know that I saw some other people having trouble with it, but there for a couple of months I couldn't get thread anywhere. So when it finally came back in stock, I actually bought a bunch because I'm like, well, that can't happen again. We need to not. Because I usually have some in stock. I usually keep stuff like that stocked up pretty good, but because I moved, I was trying to use up some of my materials so that I didn't have to move as much stuff because it costs a lot of money. I ended up getting a truck. I got rid of enough of my personal belongings before I moved that the truck that I bought was actually kind of overkill. But um, the last time I had moved, I remember wishing that I had bought a bigger truck, so... But yeah, so I did that with a bunch of things, actually. Um, I moved in the middle of March, and um, that was right when all the lockdowns and everything were going on. They actually announced the lockdown for my state the day that I was moving, um, which was interesting, to say the least. But, um, but yeah, uh, one of the things that I greatly regretted was that I uh, decided that I wasn't going to stock, like stay stocked up on toilet paper because I thought it was kind of silly to have to move big packs of toilet paper um, when I could just go get more. But then of course, right around the time that I would normally be getting ready to buy toilet paper, they were sold out everywhere. You couldn't get it, not even online. So that was exciting. Note the sarcasm there, because it's, like, not good. So, luckily, where I am, like, you can get toilet paper again, and it's not a problem, but... It got a little dicey there for a bit. I never did end up running out, but only because my very, very sweet landlord, who is amazing, and I love her very much gave me some rolls because she had some extra so we didn't ha we didn't have to go all caveman and start wiping with a leaf or anything so yeah it's good it's been an interesting year to be alive i was really really young when Y2K happened. And I do remember um, it being like really, like there was no toilet paper anywhere. And I remember it being total mayhem for a while. Uh, but obviously Y2K kind of went over smoothly in the end. It didn't end up becoming as big of a thing as they thought it was gonna be. Jury's still out on what 
coronavirus is going to be like when it's all said and done, but... But yeah, it is what it is. We live through things. It's really interesting to me um, knowing, like living through an event that you know is going to be like in history books. Like it's a big enough deal that, that it, it will have made history. I've lived through several, several of those, you know, Y2K. 9-11, coronavirus, all these different things that have gone on that are really big. It's kind of, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. It's a weird time. This is going to look really nice. I'm pretty excited about it. I don't think that it will take that long to put together once it's all said and done. So I'm not sure how long the stream will be going for. It didn't take me that long to trace all the pieces out. But it's fun. It's nice. It's good. I would like to get back to streaming more regularly. Because I did. It's, I streamed a lot there for a while. And then I didn't do any. I went totally cold turkey on the streams. So it's actually fairly difficult to do all of the things that I have to do on camera. It's like crawling around on the floor and cutting fur and tracing pieces and all that. Okay, what am I doing here? What? What's this? What are these? These are... Let's just figure out what all my pieces are again. I don't know. Oh, I know that these go together though. Where's the other one? This one. Oh, there's so much fur floating around in the air right now. Yeah, I actually really like making tails most of the time, as long as they're not super, super complicated. This Radix tail took like, I don't even know, a really long time to finish. Because it's got all the spikes and flappy bits and whatever. Oh yeah, you know what? I turned my turned my phone to do not disturb because I was on a phone call earlier. Anyway, I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay. Tuesday seems like a really strange day to stream. I uh, get more viewers when I stream on the weekend, but I've been trying really hard to not work on the weekend so that I don't get burned out. Just working during the week has been kind of difficult. So the last thing I need is to experience burnout in addition to all the other problems. I can't, I can't do it. I can't get burned out. At some point, I would like to do something more fancy for my streams, but for now, this will have to do. Okay, where's the other little, this guy? Here's another pattern, I gotta get up, grab my pattern.
What am I doing here? Ah. There's a reason why we don't throw the pattern away after we get the pieces cut out. Had a dollar for every single time I like ended up needing it. Welcome, welcome. I see we have a couple more people in here. It's nice. I haven't streamed in like a year and yet I already have five people watching. That's exciting. In case you hear like weird noises or anything going in the background, I just want to say that uh, my hot water heater is like seven feet away from my work desk. So if you hear like a little mechanical hissing sound, it is the hot water heater, presumably. Um, what am I doing here? And these. There's a lot of little stripey, stripey nonsense going on here. I feel like I've built a lot of stripes this year, but not really. Now that I think about it, Jake had a lot of stripes though. He was a very, very stripey boy. gotten to build some really cool projects. And I'm really excited for a lot of the ones that I've got coming up too. doing here. Yeah, that's right. I always try to clip as many pieces together at a time as I can. Do as much clipping at once and then do as much sewing at once and then repeat until finished. So In case anybody was wondering what the method was to the madness over here. I don't know how well my audio picks up on some of the stuff that I'm doing, so... I imagine that it could be like a little fursuit building ASMR. But my buddy had, my, one of my buddies locally just showed me, he's got this pair of headphones. It's like super crazy weird that it cancels really loud noise, but it amplifies really quiet noise somehow. So he had me put them on. He's like, okay, turn them up. And I turned them up. And I look over at him and he's so, like, you can tell he's whispering really quietly, but I could still hear him. It was so crazy. I'm like, man, I need, I need some of those. Just like wearing around. It's like a hearing aid. 
because I don't hear that well. Okay, sewing time. Where's my pedal? There it is. Okay, let's get right to it. Start with this guy here. And I think that you can see what I'm doing okay enough that I'm not going to move my camera again. And I've got a fresh needle in my sewing machine because I recently broke my needle for the first time. I hadn't changed the needle out in forever. I'm assuming that I might have broken one needle while I was making Jick because he had a lot of stripes, so it seems likely, but it's, it had been forever since the last time I traded my needle out. So that was, and just I went to replace the needle and I was like, man, when was the last time I did this? No idea. It's been a while. don't have any idea how much thread I have on my bobbin either, so we'll see how far I get into this before my bobbin runs out, but I'm not going to pull it out and check it because I like to live dangerously, so here we are. The edge is lined up here. Try to do the easier ones to start out because the ones with the little U shaped seams are actually kind of difficult. moving my scissors around. I am excited for doing more head streams though. So I got two of them that I'll be building here shortly and I'm very excited about that. I think that I will probably do more sewing streams here pretty soon so I'll have to see I haven't decided if I'm gonna do like cut out all the pieces and then do one big sewing day or if I'm gonna do like make the make one part and then make another part we'll see Oops, come on. There we go. There we go. 
Oh, except I missed a spot, so we're gonna go back over it. It's like the um, the U-shaped pieces tend to have this happen because it's very hard to trap everything into the seam when you're going over it and it's curving at the same time. So that's okay because we're just gonna go back over it the other direction and make sure everything's all stuck together. Oop, oop, except, except my thread just grabbed itself. Come here. There we go. Oh, no, I didn't get it. I've been using a smaller type of needle and the little eye for the needle is very small. So here we go, that's not too bad. Okay, so let's try that again. We gotta hold the threads better this time. When I was trying to train help, Back when that was a thing, um, I really stressed the importance of checking all of your seams to make sure that everything got stuck together because especially fabrics like this one that are really slippery, the layers pull apart even if you have them clipped together sometimes. So there we go. Now you can see, I think, what was it? It was either it was on one of these sides. Now it's all put together, there's no gaps. Nice. Got him. Let's do another one. Here we go again. Generally, there's not really a reason to sew anything more than one with more than one pass unless it's a high tension area or you miss a spot. But I've seen, yeah, look at that. We didn't have any gaps that time. Look how good that looks. Nice. That's exciting. Oh my God. And it's so crisp. I love working with seal fur. This client. Their entire fursuit is short pile furs. And I'm, I mean, it's difficult to make it look nice. You know, you have to be careful not to get any wrinkles or anything like that. But oh my gosh, short pile furs just have a special place in my heart. I really love, I really love working with nice fur. And watch if my bobbin runs out, it's gonna be on one of these. So not only is it a difficult seam to sew, but um, the top color is also white. Same color as my thread. I got a new, I bought myself a new program for my iPad over the weekend, which I haven't gotten to use at all, but um, went ahead and bought Procreate for myself for my birthday. And I'm pretty freaking excited about that because I follow a lot of really talented artists. Oh yeah, here's another spot that didn't quite catch. Is there anywhere else? Follow a lot of really talented artists that use Procreate mainly. And, um, found out recently that you can use Procreate to do 2D animation, which is one of my favorite things to do. 
Okay, that's good. Oh, gorgeous. So I'm really stoked. At some point, I will get to animate something. I don't know what I'm going to make yet, but of course I had a ton of ideas up until the point that I purchased the app and then I can't remember any of them. Suddenly, now that I have the ability to make 2D animations again, I can't think of any of the things that I wanted to do. But that's kind of how it goes. It tends to go like that. And then one of my friends just showed me this really cool 3D sculpting app. Like I was looking at that earlier. I ended up going ahead and buying it. It was like $15, but I'm used to using free programs, but there really is something to having the paid version of one of those programs because you get a lot more tools. And the more it makes a difference to have those extra tools too, because the more tools you have, the more things that you can do with it. And um, even though Sculptress worked for my basic needs up until now, I would like to get to do more like um, intricate sculpting. Yeah, look at that. Oh, so crisp. Okay, here we go. Put some more pieces. Let's pop in. I'm just going to toss this one that's broken. I was living in my... Living in my little thing there, because... Okay, now I think... If I remember correctly... Yeah. The fewer pieces you have, the fewer places they can go, so it makes it a little bit easier to put everything together. It's like a weird, fuzzy puzzle. Actually, fursuit building in general is kind of just fancy puzzle making. Just taking, except you have to make the puzzle and then you have to put it together. Oh yes, that is going to look so nice. Where'd the other one go? Cruising, you can tell that I had caffeine today. Speaking of which, we have gotten, we've delved into pumpkin spice latte season. And while I don't like pumpkin spice lattes, I do like pumpkin flavored other things. So the coffee shop started making pumpkin chais. That's actually their like drink of the week this week. And chai is my favorite. I love chai. I can't drink coffee anymore because um, I have a stomach ulcer. So it uh, if I drink coffee, I spend, like, at least one, if not several days in excruciating pain. But I can still drink chai, so that's nice. And I like chais better anyways. It's like a cup of warm pie. Okay. It's going to be this one. I just want to make sure that I'm getting... right direction here. Yeah. Yeah. So when people donate to my coffee account, rather than using my coffee donations to buy coffee, I usually use them to buy chai. And sometimes I use them to buy little programs for my iPad that I get to use to enjoy. When people make little donations to me, I sure do appreciate it. I haven't checked my account in a minute, but I'm pretty sure that I haven't gotten any lately, but that's that's okay. It's a it's been a rough year financially for just about everybody I know. So whenever somebody does something like that, it's always a huge surprise to me. Because it's like, you know, even if they would only donate like $3, it's still like, oh, thank you for giving me your hard-earned money. I appreciate it. I do. Okay, now let's see. Which one of these? 
Let's together. This should be should be fairly self-explanatory, except what the hell? Yes, that's the right direction. Okay. Something like that. And then, what does that mean for the pieces that I have already cut out? It means that this one goes with that one. Oops. That one right off my desk. Again, my chair is very squeaky. I need to WD-40 that bad boy, but it's... I'm chubby, so it's just going to complain, and I understand if I had to hold me all day, I'd probably groan too. But it doesn't make any noise unless I move around, and then it sounds like fart. It does like all the, let's just squeak to there. Oh, yes, I'm very excited about this. I, I really do enjoy getting small parts commissions for this exact reason that sometimes you just need like a small project to work on while you're waiting for something else and tails and paws and whatever really fit the bill. It's actually really fun to get to make some sort of little random thing in between everything else. Okay and then you know what I think no okay I'm just gonna go ahead and sew these light back on. I don't have another light bulb for my sewing machine and every time I've gone to Joann's recently they haven't had any more so I'm trying to make sure that I'm not wasting my light bulb. So I don't I don't know when I'm gonna be able to get another one and it is kind of important to be able to see what I'm doing. Amazon. Yeah, I should check on Amazon. I should do that. Um, I don't think that the light bulbs for sewing machines are universal, so I'm a little bit nervous about getting the wrong one, but that is a good idea. I should try to just shop for one on Amazon. So the nearest Joann's is about an hour away, so... It's an hour each direction. That's not round trip. It's two hours round trip. That's, which is really weird for me because I got very accustomed to having a Joann's be like 30 minutes away, 25, 30 minutes. And I used to have like three different Joann's that I could go to. Did I get both of those seams? Did I do both? I did both. So, um, the th the trick that I have learned, um, that I'm, I still have a hard time remembering to do it sometimes, but, um, is to call. Like, I hate making phone calls, but it's better than driving two hours to show up and have them not have what you need. So, so lately... I need, if I need something, I usually call ahead and make sure that they have it first. But, but yeah, that's a little bit difficult when it comes to things like zippers because you have to be very descriptive about what you want. And sometimes those wonderful Joann's people will set stuff aside for you so that when you get there, you can just go pick it up. Just like tell them who you are and you walk up to the register and you pay for whatever you needed and then you leave. You don't even have to shop around. Did I do 
Let's go ahead and close the book. Okay. Yeah, curbside pickup. You know, there's a lot of things. I like to find the silver linings and things as as a as much of a puddle glum as I can be. Um, I do like to try to find the silver linings in situations. And one of my favorite things about uh, all the changes that have had to happen so far this year is how, like, you can do everything remote now, just about, like, um, you know, when I, when I need to see my therapist or my accountant or something like that, I can just Zoom call them, and then I don't have to, I don't have to spend tons of time in the car, and it's, it's very comfortable, it's a very comfortable way of doing any, everything, and I can't believe that we didn't start doing it sooner. It's like, kind of wish that I could do that for my doctor's appointment that I have this week, but and it turns out when you go see a new doctor, they like to look at you, so, so I have to go do that, but, and curbside pickup is awesome. Um, my friends that live up the hill from me get their, they pick up their groceries. They do like online Walmart order. And then they just go pick it up. And I don't, I'm going to go over that spot again because I'm not happy with that. Um, I don't do that specifically because I don't trust other people to do my shopping for me. I'm picky enough about the things that I like and the brands that I like and whatever that I don't really trust other people to do my grocery shopping for me. But, um, but for other things, it's awesome. And I really like being able to order. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so pretty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do. I do miss being able to just go see people, though. It's in history, it's a horrible time to have allergies, too, because if you cough or sneeze or sniffle anywhere around people, they get very uncomfortable. <laughs> it's like, I can't believe how many times I've, like, sneezed or something and had to clarify, like, I don't have the Rona, I just have allergies. Yep, 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 I don't like it. And they make substitutions sometimes. I, uh, um, before I moved earlier this, was it this year? It might've been this year. I'm not sure. That might've actually been last year, but my concept of time has gotten rather rusty. So, um, but I got sick and I, um, couldn't, I could barely get off the couch. I was very, very sick. I had like, I'm guessing the flu, but, um, I did a Walmart order for my groceries and uh, gosh, that was nice. I ordered some Gatorade and some chicken noodle soup and I left a little note in the um, comment section for the driver to let her know that I was sick so that she knew what she was getting into. But um, I wanted to order NyQuil, but it turns out that you can't. It's one of those things that you have to go pick up which is unfortunate because that was the thing that I needed the most. But um, yeah, she showed up to deliver my groceries and she was like, oh yeah, like whatever it is that you have, I had like a week ago and I know how hard it is to get up and moving around. So I'm glad I could help out and like tipped her a whole bunch for her trouble. So uh, yeah, yeah, change in season. There's been a lot of smoke this year too. That's uh, that's been a big problem for me with all the fires everywhere. Colorado is just absolutely on fire during the summer this year. It got so smoky. They actually, uh, there were a whole bunch of birds that died. And they were trying to figure out why the birds were dying in mass. Because they're like, yeah, you know, when a bird population gets 
to a certain size, you know, there tends to be like a disease or a parasite or something that will take a bunch of them out, but it happened really rapidly and they were trying to figure out what was going on. And I'm not, I'm not a biologist or anything. I'm, you know, I'm not an expert in, in any of that, but I would be willing to bet that it was because of the smoke because they don't, they don't have air purifiers. They don't get to go inside you know, and birds have really, really sensitive lungs. So I'm thinking that it was probably the smoke that did it. And they had a whole bunch of birds that died. Yep, yep, yep. I hate, I hate that there's things that they can't deliver, though. I understand why, but I also don't. Because it seems like, you know, you could take a picture of your driver's license or something and put it in there just like make your account verify that you are the age that you are in order to order that stuff. But I don't know, especially something NyQuil like, I mean, I guess you can, you can abuse NyQuil, but it's not like, uh, what is it? What is it? What do they use? Isn't it Robitussin that you use to make meth? Because I know that you can't, not only do you have to show your ID for that one, but you can only buy so much at a time before you get put on a list. Oh, yes, this is going to be wonderful. Here's Peek. Her peek at the zebra tail. Yeah, right? Liquor fine, NyQuil, no. I think it's Robitussin that you used to make meth. I don't know. I just, I, I watched Breaking Bad, like, years ago, and I feel like I remember that being a thing. But one of those, one of those weird cough medicines. I don't know. I hate that stuff. I've had to take that. It's like a decongestant. It, it's horrible. I mean, I thought NyQuil was bad. But I can't imagine abusing that stuff because it tastes awful. You must have, like, burned out your sense of taste if you, like, are okay with abusing something like that because yuck. I don't really even drink anymore, so my tolerance for yucky things has gone down. Okay, we got all of our halves. Well, we got our halves all sewn together. Now we can clip them together and look at that. We're making great time on this tail today. Especially considering how many pieces. Sudafed, yeah. Sudafed, yuck. That's right, because it's uh, Sudafedrin, yeah. One of those nasty, nasty medications, yuck. No me gusta. Okay. I am having a blast with this tail. We're really cruising today. The caffeine is working. It was a good tail design. I really like, I, uh, I really like zebras. I've always wanted to make a zebra. I've not, um, not made any equines so far, but I've always wanted to make a zebra. I just know that it would be a pain because of stripes. And I would, of course I would want to sew it because, you know, sewing looks so much more crisp than airbrushing. And airbrushing tends to bleed. So, yeah, we're really making good time on this tail. I'm actually pretty excited that people are talking in the chat now too, because it's, really fun to not be streaming to what, you know, like an empty room. It's like sitting in an interrogation room with like, you know, one way glass or something that you know that somebody's watching you, but they're not, you don't, you can't hear them. You can't see them. I have a piece of fur stuck to the back of my throat. That will happen. Okay. Oop. Oop. I had to clip.
clip explode on me the other day. It was just like went to clip something together and one of my clips shattered into like five pieces. It was very exciting. They're like a little bomb. You never know when they're going to go off too. Like if I were smarter, I would wear safety glasses while I was working. Because I had, I've had some, some things happen before where like a needle broke and shot at my face or something like that, but you would think that I would learn my lesson, but instead I do not continue knowing that at some point one of these clips will probably break and go everywhere. Got to be sure to leave a gap in here somewhere. Probably do that closer to the top, though. I also have to decide where I'm going to leave that gap. I'm going to leave it right there. We leave a gap so that when we um, when we go to turn it right side out, we can do that without cutting anywhere. Okay. And then here in a minute, I will also have to make a back for this bad boy. So I tried a new thing on this person's tail for the rest of their suit where I made the back out of fur and I actually really liked the way that that turned out. So I think I'm gonna do that again. Okay, here we go, are we ready? Hi, hi, Captain. Are you ready, kids? <sighs> Thank you. Gonna go over it and make sure that I got all those little bad boys in there. Make sure we don't have any gaps. I'm not sure about that spot. Let me take a look. Yeah, no, no gaps. Good. Good. I like it when there's no gaps. Cut the threads up here. Uh, 
here we go again. I feel like my bobbin's about to run out. <sighs> Sounds loose. Sounds like it's not very full anymore. That's okay. I think we have, yeah, I have another bobbin wound up already. So, just have to keep an eye out for it. scared me. There's a little piece that sticks out on the sewing arm and it caught the edge of my fingernail. I'm like, Yee. So it's all bent up now, so it shouldn't be able to hurt me. But in the past, it's very nearly taken a fingernail. So I don't want that. I like to keep all my nails. ticket. Look at that. My bobbin ran out right at the end of that. Look at that. That's how much thread I had left on there. Jeez. Told you my bobbin was about to run out. I can feel it. Good timing. That never happens. Okay, let's make sure. What do we just do that we just did the bottom? Okay, let's make sure that all of our seams are good. Make sure we don't have any gaps. Oh, I'm gonna go over that little spot again, actually. That's not really a gap, I'm just not happy with the way that it's sewn together. Look at that, nice. Where was that spot? What was that spot? Oh, it's on the bottom, that's why. That spot is the one that I wanna go over again. It's a, just a tail, so it's incredibly unlikely that that spot would ever become a problem, but way easier to just make sure that it's in good shape right now than later so okay next thing that we got to do is we got to make a back this tail is about like about like that do i have do i have a big enough scrap on here for that or am i gonna have to cut i'm gonna have to cut a little piece Ooh, one of my feet went numb that's exciting Okay, let's see here, what did I say, go like that. I don't know, that seems a little small. Pretty 
pretty good. Let's see if that's big enough. I'm gonna make it a little bigger. Okay, that's good. I was a little worried that I was making that tail too thick when I was designing the pattern, but once it gets turned right side out and gets stuffed, it won't look nearly as thick. Gonna melt the edges of your strapping so it doesn't unravel. And we use the gayest strapping we can find, so. Important, yep. Yeah, I uh, when I was one of the people that I tried to train back in the day, um, he uh, he on a couple of things he didn't burn the strap the edges of the strapping first and it became a problem. I had a couple of things. Um, most of them were mine, so it wasn't a huge problem. But he had a couple of things that fell apart because the strap he didn't burn the strapping, so the strapping unraveled, and then. Uh, yeah, no, no good. Okay. Let's do it like this. And set this bad boy off to the side. I'm going to try to get it just right there, I think. Tail straps are pretty high tension areas, so we want to make sure that they're sewn on really good. Because the last thing you want is somebody's tail getting ripped apart just because somebody grabbed a hold of it or something. So that happens, unfortunately. Okay, and it's a little bit, it's a little bit trickier to sew things with fur up like that because it can clog your machine. Why we go slow. There we go. Okay, good. Strapping attached. The bottom part of that strapping is gonna get in that seam a little bit, but I think it should be fine. Ta-da! We have a tail end. And now we sew it onto the tail. This is the part where we get to see how my circle estimation is. I think I did a pretty good job. But we'll see. Uh, 
Oh, that seam is going to suck. It's thick. Fingers crossed we don't break a needle here. We'll see. As, as tough as my necky is, it can still only do so much. Got a lot of pink clips in that handful. Nice, okay, good. Got fur stuck to my nose. It gets wound up in my septum ring and then it tickles me. Don't like it. I kind of like this little bird's eye view of my sewing machine too. I feel like this is a cool way of getting to see it. I, ideally, I would like for you guys to get a shot like right here, but the only way of doing that would be to hang something, have like an arm coming off the wall or something that my webcam can perk on. We don't have a setup like that currently, so it's, it's doable. I just haven't done it. Okay, we're going to go nice and slow. Nice and slow over the strapping. So if you go slow and you hit something, um, you're a lot less likely to break a needle. I don't really mind. I've got more needles, but it's kind of, kind of jarring when you run over a needle. Okay, here we go. This is the part that I'm worried about. And we're going to go around this twice just to make sure the back is sewn on really well. Yay, we didn't break a needle yet. Okay, here we go. One more lap. How long have I been straining for? Just over an hour? It's not bad. Dare I say it, this has actually been kind of fun. Come on. I'm gonna go over this spot again. Carefully. Okay. Is that, is that two laps? I think that was two laps. Yeah, look at that. Just fine there. Nobody's ever gonna see this, but I like to do this sometimes. I'm the only one, you, we, uh, the, the five of us, the six of us are the only ones who are ever gonna see it. <laughs> just uh, sometimes I like to do just a little hidden, little hidden thing. It makes my life more exciting. Okay, here we go. We didn't leave ourselves a very big hole for turning this right side out. It's only about that big. So uh, we're gonna, we're almost ready for stuffing. Let's do it like this. Because I haven't been severely overworking myself, this doesn't hurt my hands too bad, actually. That's nice. Come here. Come here. Ha <laughs> ha, how satisfying was that? Not bad. Okay. All right. We are ready for stuffing. Look at that. Not bad. Okay, give me a sec. I'm going to stuff it. Stuffing's over here. Stuffing the skinnier tails is a little bit harder because you gotta 
You gotta get the stuffing all the way down to the bottom. It takes a minute. And then we'll have a nice fully stuffed zebra tail. And then all we have to do is sew that little gap shut and we'll be good to go. Let's see if we grab a bunch of stuff in here. Well, we need to grab another couple of handfuls, but for now. Ooh, come on. No, it's getting everywhere. Okay. Thank you. I'm having a good time. Again, this is why I like some of the smaller projects. So they come together really quick. They're a nice little thing that I can do. Make sure that's Glad you like it. It's encouraging. It's an encouraging stream. Quite frankly, it makes me want to stream more often. Like that. That's gonna be so nice. I'm very excited about the way this is turning out. Hey, it's good. I have to roll it up, make sure it's not too lumpy. But for now, we just gotta focus on getting the right amount of stuffing in there. Look at that. <laughs> Boing. It's kind of nice. I'll be able to brush this bad boy out. Where's my brush? That's going to be the next thing we run into. That was over here somewhere. Well, we'll deal with that in a minute. That is a problem for, for in a few minutes. Okay. Okay. Almost all the way stopped here. Make sure the base of the tail is stuffed really good so it doesn't sag. I may have just grabbed the right amount of stuffing for this. Okay. Nice. Okay. Now we have a fully stuffed zebra tail. You just have to sew the top sh or the little the stuffing hole shut. I wonder if that's a long enough thread. Let's try it. I'm just doing a ladder stitch just so it shut so that hopefully it won't be visible. Make 
try not to poke ourselves. I like how I say ourselves, like we're, I mean, we're going through this journey together, but in reality, it's me that's doing the sewing. You guys are not gonna get poked. Hopefully not. Yeah, I like to make people feel included. Wherever possible. We're all in this together, right? Make sure that seam is nice and tight. Some people like using a curved needle for this, but I don't have a lot of success with curved needles. They're very hard to hold on to. You basically need to hold them with pliers. So I would rather just use a straight needle. Make sure we're getting all the way in here. And we can just tie it off. I have to use upholstery thread for hand sewing because I really crank on the thread and if I don't use something really strong, it snaps. I also have to buy thicker, bigger needles because not only do I have big hands, but I, because I crank on the thread really bad, I have actually broken needles that way before. Let's do this over here. I um, used to use smaller needles and I just had the, the entire backs of them breaking off because I was pulling on them too hard. So. I always try to leave my needle with thread in it because it makes it easier to find if it falls out of the spool. Easier to retrieve and then nobody gets a needle in their foot because that would be no bueno. We don't have money for things like that. Cause what was it? it was uh I think it was Wahanita got a needle in their foot and they had to go to the ER and get it removed because it broke off on the inside of their foot and that's just no bueno. Let's not have that happen. Okay, where's my fur brush? It should be over here. I turned my studio into an absolute salad the other day looking for my Instamorph. Oh, here it is. Just turned my entire apartment upside down. I never did end up finding it. Okay. Let's just brush all the seams out so they look real nice. Good thing this thing doesn't have feelings because I would be hurting them right now. I 
And in case anybody was curious, I find that going back and forth on the seam like that picks the fur out in a way that ends up looking nicer. We did that journey together. It was a whole tail adventure. And now we have a gorgeous finished. Let's see if I can find out where my camera is so I can show you. Beautiful zebra tail. Yay! And that only took uh, about an hour and a half, honestly, uh, including the cutting the fur and all that. That wasn't too bad. Not bad. It's actually rather fast. Sweet. Thank you. Now I gotta take some really nice pictures and send it to my client, and make sure they like it. But yeah, it was good. And it's very soft too. This is part of the reason why I keep touching it. Just to make sure that the kind of sure you could you gotta like this it's not a long enough tail to really deal with twisting like it's not really twisting at all but longer tails if they start to twist you can kind of need the uh need the fur and the stuffing around and it will solve some twisting there's like a little it's a little lump here i want to fix there we go yay thank you Thanks for watching, guys. I think that stream went pretty well for my first stream in like a year. I think I had a really good time. So, turns out streaming is not so scary after all. But look at that. Oh, gosh. I wish I could keep it. It's very nice and it's firmly stuffed. So, um, when it's worn with a belt, it should really maintain its shape really well, but it should have a nice little wiggle to it as well. So that'll be good. Hopefully, hopefully they like it. Yeah, it's kind of, it's only gonna be like an hour, two hours, that kind of thing. I have a lot harder time with streams that are longer than maybe three or four hours because uh, generally when I'm working, I try to get up and walk around and stretch every hour or two just to maintain my posture, keep my back happy. It gives me a chance to stretch my hands out and do all the, all the things that you should do to keep from getting like carpal tunnel. Um, oh, my hands are shaky. Um, but yeah, so, so with longer streams, I mean, in theory, what I can do is say, like, we're going to have intermission halfway through or something like that. But, um, but yeah, that's, I, it's a lot more intimidating to do a stream that's multiple, multiple hours long. So the nice, short, little poppy, like, one and a half hour long streams are more my jam. But, um, and then when I have my studio picked back up and it's not total chaos, I might, um have an easier time doing look at that that's such a cute shape look. Doink. <laughs> kind of see it's got like a little like a little dollop a little tail dollop oh hi welcome I'm so excited I'm gonna have to I think I mean no promises here but I think I might stream again on Friday because I should have enough stuff to do. I've got fur all over my laptop. Should have enough uh, fabric cut out that I can do a nice sewing stream. But um, I'll see. We'll see. Um, it'll depend on how Thursday goes. But um, I would like to stream again. This was actually pretty fun. <sighs> yeah, I should set a streaming schedule. It's just been very difficult to set any kind of schedule at all lately. So um, I don't want to make promises that I can't keep. I don't like doing that. But, um, but I think that, I think that people tend to like being able to see what I'm up to. 
I just kind of want to see if I can pick some of these seams out a little bit better. It's not too bad. I'm just very picky. Um, Tuesdays and Fridays. Maybe. It would be nice. Uh, I gotta find a way to get some of the local yokels off my back because now that I live closer to my parents, it's a lot harder to find peaceful, uninterrupted working days. But, um, which is part of the reason why I haven't been streaming is that I'll get several hours worth of work done in the morning and then somebody will interrupt me. And then I'll get a couple more hours done in the evening, and then I'll get interrupted again. You did! You caught the end of the stream! I, I'm trying to decide. I might... I'm thinking, I'm thinking here. I've had a good enough time with this that I kind of don't want to stop. Um, so what I might do is I might take a brief intermission to... It's uh, 3.30 and I haven't had any lunch. So I might take a little bit of an intermission to have some lunch and get some more fur traced out and then um, start back up again. Kind of, you know, I, I may as well. I, um, I'm generally done with work at six. Um, so, you know, it would only be another couple hours, but that's better than nothing, right? So we'll see. Let me think about that for a minute. Oh gosh, this tail is so nice. It's very soft. Thank you, cheers. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Um, maybe I will. Maybe I will. I'll go find a snack and do some stretching and whatnot and then I'll start the stream back up. Um, for those of us uh, in the chat who are in the personalities group chat, which I'm assum assuming is basically everybody because that's the only place that I posted the link. Um, you will get, and I'll put another link in the uh, the personalities chat when I'm ready to get started again, which should be, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes, I think, probably. Yeah, probably 30 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna take an intermission, and then I think I will stream some more um, in a bit. And I've got some, I'm working on some kangaroo paws is the other thing that I'm gonna be working on for the day for Dizzy. Um, yeah, okay, well, for now, I'm gonna call it, and um, I will drop another link in like probably 30 minutes in the group chat, and then we'll get started again. Thank you everybody who joined. It's actually really, really nice to have not only people watching, but people interacting. It makes it a lot more fun to stream when I've got some comments, and I know that I'm not just streaming to an empty room. It's uh, it's one of those things. It's actually kind of hard to to find the motivation to stream if there's nobody watching. So, um, but yeah. So I will get started again in a bit. And in the meantime, thank you everyone who joined. And I hope that if you're available, that you'll join again later. And uh, if not, thank you very much anyway. So, like, ta ta. <laughs> I love you guys.